Today is day one of the Fortnite modification, Fortnite pump gun mod. We're gonna be using a brand new Dremel tool, yay, for Dremel 3000, to remove the Nerf logos, very likely the Fortnite logos as well. Um, quick overview, I'm only gonna be doing this in about a one minute burst. There's another Nerf logo on the back, Fortnite logo on the back. We'll go ahead and quote all of the major groups here. They could have spared the nickel to paint the opposite side if the logo meant that much to them. Um, this door is to help load and deal with stuck darts. Had they done this gun right, it would have been on the bottom instead of on the top. So I do like the trigger, though. All right. Okay, so ultimately the Dremel tool feels like a bit of a mistake. Um, I'm not getting the length out of the Dremel tool, so I'm coming in at an angle. I've already had a little bit of a gouge down here. Right there. Not that that's gonna matter much with the final product being painted over and being uh, stickered. The butt of the gun is probably gonna be the major sticker. Uh, belt sander would come in handy about now, but I don't think we have any of those coming in anytime soon. I will take a look and see if my old belt sander is still alive and kicking, and if so, this should come off a great deal easier. Welcome back. We're going to be working with this monster today. All right, you'll notice, unfortunately, we got us a wiggle. Um, you are always told by your shop teachers, woodworking instructors, if you're lucky enough to still have those, that you should always work only in safe conditions. The reason we don't is simple, because we just can't find a way to make the conditions safe. If I had any kind of a See, it doesn't really work. Any kind of a wedge, I could do something. It's a little bit more stable, but yeah. All right, second minute is run out. Let's get to work. All right, our first pass with the belt sander has revealed an interesting truth to the handle of the blaster. The blaster has a recess, recessed curve, and then the Nerf letters are stamped coming back out at you. So to get them flush is gonna be an interesting little challenge. I'm not too concerned about the, um, the handle here because it will get painted over, smoothed down again with a nicer grain of sandpaper. Besides, in the end, this is basically just a jolt. For those interested, you can clearly see how the handle is recessed now. You can see where the blaster has been laid flat like this against the belt. I don't actually sand at the bottom down here because scratch up the whole, the whole blaster. I don't want to get that crazy with any glues or epoxies, but I actually hold it up here by hand. And I take it back and forth with a sweeping motion, back and forth to keep everything smoothed. And there, and there's your recess. This is a continued work in progress. As you can see, the F in the front is nearly gone. The bottom of the uh, first part of the N has vanished. And the top part of the circle of Nerf has also partly been completely removed. Um, Nice and smooth. Despite how it looks, it's actually pretty smooth. Um, it's fascinating that it looks like wood grain. I may keep that in mind should I decide to wood grain a uh, project in the future. I very likely won't be too worried about putting wood grain on this blaster because it's that's not the point. Um, this is just one of my major first projects. 
I just wanted to um, serve me, not Nerf, who didn't do this blaster any justice. Not Fortnite, I don't play the game. Just me. All right, as you can see, it is a pretty gnarled surface there. A little bit up on the handle. Smoothed out the bottom red plastic. And because there was no real need to show the rest of the business, here's the other side already done for you. So it came out pretty good too. It's amazing that actually is almost perfectly smooth, even though you can clearly still see lettering. So that is the first step. Uh, we have the rough sand in there. I will be working on a, a smoother sand for stickering purposes later on, um, epoxies, solvents, chemicals, whatever we're gonna do, we're gonna do. That's up to the artist. Also a train. And my light has returned and the sound quality has improved. Okay, so, um, blaster at rest. Hey, look, it's those little gray feet. Uh, that's actually a really stupid way to rest the blaster because if you notice, the rest of the blaster is not actually at rest, so to speak, but is instead just waiting for the blaster to move up. And now it's no longer resting on the feet because it's on the trigger. If you pull up closer, look, now it just falls over. So I don't really know what those little gray things are supposed to be. They are probably going to be junked unless... No, looks like I'm going to have to keep them because this plastic doesn't match up with the rest of the blaster. Unfortunate. So this is the blaster cocked. To access the side door, I'm sure people have checked out other videos, but if you haven't, there's the side door. There's the interior of the blaster. There's actually ridges inside that barrel. Bizarre. And then that's where you stuff the dart from the front of the barrel. I still can't figure out how that post is doing anything because no air comes out of this barrel. So I don't understand what's propelling the dart because nothing reaches me. But when you close, you do not have to actually close this window. You can simply close the slide and the blaster is ready to go. We'll do that here. So my next step is gonna be sanding with some finer sandpaper, a couple of different sanding blocks, anything to start taking down some of the, the grit here. Um, while I still have a little bit of daylight, the sun is going down. I expect in a half hour I'll be in pretty good, pretty good on nighttime. Then it'll be inside the house and I will probably crack open the blaster to take a look at the internals. Um, let's talk a little bit about the internals real quick. I mentioned in the previous bit that I've been told this blaster stings a minute. Um, in firing it, the blaster has not had a very impressive range with the mega darts. However, it has successfully launched mega darts like a mortar over 50 feet. But I don't want a mortar. I don't think anybody wants a mortar shaped like a shotgun. So, small problem with the sandpaper. I got carried away. I remembered the wisdom of Mr. Miyagi and I waxed on and I waxed off resulting in breaking up my nice smooth wood grain and turning it into this hellaciously curved garbo. My fault, my bad. But this is why I'm doing this step by step so that those who wanna learn can learn from the mistakes of the predecessor. When you use your sandpaper, don't do that. 
By the way, that's another train. Good Lord. Okay, I don't want to rush things along, but I don't want to have too many segments. As you can see, I've gone about as far as I can with the sandpaper that I have. These gouges are, scratches are pretty deep. I'm um, not going to be able to take those out anytime soon, but both sides of the blaster looking pretty ready, pretty smoothed for stickers. I do want to talk a little bit about the blaster, having fired it a few times now. Um, shout out to Coop for actually putting in 500, 300, however many darts you shot. I know it was over 100. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder if perhaps this blaster was not originally intended to fire in this manner because it seems too solidly put together to be a just quick throw down and hey look it's a jolt i think maybe the engineering team simply ran out of time when i say ran out of time this pump very thick very potent all this area on this blaster it's inspiringly huge the sights everything on this blaster is so oversized that it seems like a complete waste of plastic to make this into a jolt now of course we have the mandalorian garbo stick But that's a much tighter build, whereas this thing is just so huge. Look at that on my arm. Look at that on my hand. It's so huge that you should easily have been able to get more darts and so forth in here. I think really they ran out of time. 